a doctor can never live without patients but patient can certainly live without doctor this is the reason why we make it a sort of a business where we hide things which are obvious and try to project things which interests us and gets us money number 2 most mark my words now most if not all that we have been doing has resulted in more misery to mankind than any benefit to mankind i am telling you this from inside the business i'm looking at it i've got out of the system and i'm looking into the system and that's why now i'll give you a clinician's view of holistic concept in medicine this is what i call as the wellness concept you would be surprised a professor of medicine in the united states of america asked one of his new resident who is a patient the answer was a man or a woman who sees a doctor becomes a patient and she asked the same intern when does he become a man or a woman again the answer was rarely ever if ever this is what dr larry rossi was saying about predicting the future if you are interested in physics or predicting the future in medicine please read this article in the british medical journal it's called predicting the unpredictable predicting the unpredictable this is written by a physicist who teaches physics in the strathclyde university in glasgow his name is william firth f i r t h and the article is on the 26th december issue of the british medical journal 1991 get on to the internet get this article and read to see how it happens and i'm going to show you data which shows that people who go for a regular checkup are the ones who have three times more death than those who probably don't do that the whole person healing was probably the original concept of modern medicine hippocrates said cure rarely comfort mostly but console always but we very soon forgot hippocrates though we take a hippocratic oath in the name of hippocrates we have been hypocrites all through <laughs> friends this is the great science the mother of most of wisdoms in this world and if you properly go through history it was in the year 400 bc alexander the great invaded india alexander of course did not go back to greece but the indian books and the indian scholars went back to greece to alexandria where started the modern medicine of hippocrates 300 years later and almost a verbatim translation of the charaka samhita the original text in in indian system called the ayurveda and there he very clearly says whatever he said should be backed by reason because if you back your talk by reason there's no bad feeling about anything and that's exactly what i'm going to do in the next few minutes i want to give you three messages in this talk message number 1 reductionist science has failed it has to fail i always give my students a simple example look at this water if you reduce water to hydrogen and oxygen and study the qualities of hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen is very volatile oxygen abets volatility now put together in reductionist science the whole is the sum total of the bits so water must be terribly terribly volatile is that right that's exactly what happens to the human system and the human physiology that dr larry das was talking about what happens to human physiology we study a cell and then extrapolate the data on to the organ then to the organism and then to the organization and this is where we have gone wrong in fact there was a physiologist who spoke the truth but nobody took it very seriously he was a very great man his name was charles sherington he in the year 1899 became the professor of physiology in the liverpool university at a very young age of 42 in his acceptance speech he said i quote sciences he said positive sciences can never ever answer the question why they can at the best answer the question how or how much he gave an example a physiologist can say how does the heart contract but a physiologist will never be able to say why does the heart contract and if only you understand why does the heart contract you get the right physiology in fact i tell you our physiology has been so wrong that the simple physiology of fluid replacement if you meet with an accident on the road or if you have a vomiting and diarrhea or for any reason you lose lot of body water 
what we do in the hospital is counterproductive. Many times you survive in spite of doctors. I will only give you one study. There was a study which compared the Vietnam War victims of major grievous injury vis-a-vis -vis the Falklands War victims recently. In Vietnam, the Americans had a five-star hospital in Saigon and a grievously hurt patient was in Saigon within five to ten minutes. And even in the helicopter that was taken, there was a five-star hospital, high-tech hospital. Look at Falklands. The poor British didn't have any friends around. They didn't have a hospital there. They didn't have medical facilities. There were no helicopters. And some of the wounded soldiers were left in the snow. Luckily, it was in October, November, for as long as 24 to 48 hours. Then they were transported all the way, about 16 hours, back to England for treatment. And lo and behold, now a retrospective data shows that the per capita death of seriously injured patients, with all other parameters being equal, was twice that in Vietnam as compared to Falklands, where nature did a lot of healing. I won't go into the details because time constraints do not permit me to go into the detail. Now, the future, next message I want to give you is, future is not for reduction in science at all. It's for health promotion, not disease prevention. Remember one thing that our establishment does? We medicalize human life. We medicalize society. I'll give you a simple definition of normality. You go to a doctor, he says, you're normal. He pats you on the back. What is the meaning of normal? It's a statistical term for every parameter that he tests. There's a Gaussian distribution in society, which is a bell-shaped curve. And the median plus two standard deviation is supposed to be normal. I'll give you an example. What's the normal height of Indians? Rustam Roy and myself. If you have a Gaussian curve, it's 5.5 inches, plus minus one inch, 5.6, 5.4. Now, somebody who is 5.3 is abnormal according to our concept. Somebody who is six feet is abnormal according to concept. Which means, if you understand basic statistics, 5% of normal human beings on any parameter checked automatically become abnormal, which we call as false positive. Okay? Have you understood? Are you with me so far? Now, come to think of it, there is a machine called the total body scanner, TBS, which checks 500 parameters of your body at a given time. How many parameters? 500 which means 500 into 5 is 2,500. If 100 people go for a checkup, 2,500 patients come out. Did you understand? That means there will not be a well man in society if he went for a checkup. So the future is preserving health and that is the essence or the, the main point in Ayurveda, which says swastasya swastha rakshitam. Preserve the health of the well. And if you take what Dr. Larry Dossi just now told you, if you think you are well at a given point in time, you are well. And all that you and I have to do as healers is preserve that feeling of wellness. And you would be surprised. There is a study of coronary bypass surgery is done. They did a sham surgery. They put only a skin incision, didn't open the chest at all, sewed it up, and that had the same effect as CABG. But the business of CABG, the coronary artery bypass grafting, is the thing that keeps the hospital till moving in this world, country also. There's a beautiful editorial, if anyone of you are interested to read, which is called Cardiac Interventions and Accountability in this world, in this country, United States of America. It's in the New England Journal of Medicine, September 1997, page 2213. And it's written by a professor of cardiology called Harlem Krumholz in Yale. And I quote one sentence. He says, the cardiac interventions done in this country are done more for money because cardiac interventions are the ones which get billions of dollars in cash, prestige, television interviews, state the symbol for doctors, hospitals, and manufacturers of drugs and technology. This is why we do cardiac interventions. Some of you might be knowing that a hospital in this country has been closed by the police because they found that 84% of the bypass surgeries done there were done for money and 16% only benefited the patient. And this is called the Tenet Hospital in Reading in California. The third thing is, the human body does not follow the linear laws. If your blood pressure today is high, and if I claim to lower it with a chemical poison that I give you, it does not mean as time evolves, it will be held like that for your good. You will be surprised to know, catastrophic things happen. This is called the butterfly effect. Edward Lawrence, 
who propounded the original hypothesis for predicting the weather found out weather predictions rarely ever if ever come correct and he propounded another hypothesis to balance that it's called the butterfly effect he said after i have put all my data into my computer if a butterfly moves its wings in beijing in china there could be storms in new york after a month which i cannot account for and that's exactly what's happening in human body this is called the lipono effect you know non linearity it goes on increasing something else so human body follows the non linear science now there's a science of chaos fractals and holism nothing is integer in the human body what is the heart is it a square is it a round is it uh, it's uh, uh, oblong is it a triangle no but still we use the linear integer laws we say the ejection fraction of the heart is 60% or 55% absolutely wrong ejection fraction can change depending on your mind did you know that where is the mind never mind but the mind can change your ejection fraction when you are very happy your ejection fraction can be more when you have tranquility if your heart rate comes down ejection fraction goes up when you are worried if i told the patient look my god your four vessels are blocked you are not going to live long ejection fraction goes down and ejection fraction got go down so much that he may drop down dead i'll give you a concrete example we had a professor of radiotherapy very eminent professor he was 75 hale and healthy his wife was bothering him you haven't gone for a checkup so he went to one of his old students who was a cardiologist and the man said he checked him up and said oh sir you are you are fit as a fiddle at 75 you look like 25 but just we let's have an ecg so he lied down and the ecg came out and as it was coming out he saw the cardiologist saw i'll show you what ecg is he saw that there was an old healed infarct old healed heart attack which the patient didn't know so he told him sir you have had a heart attack he said you know he just said that you have had a heart attack he said and turned around lo and behold the old man had met his maker already in heaven he died on the spot just because he was told he had a heart attack now this is a concept of disease i have developed and published years ago see disease is not in the body disease is all over the place it starts in the mind the seed starts in the mind it is aspected by your gene and it's nurtured by the cosmos your environment and what happens in the body like your cholesterol or whatever you want to call it is only a transitory thing and disease ultimately is a culmination of all these things and if you want recovery if you want healing not curing i think dr uh, professor roy referred to this cure if you look at the webster's dictionary says bring back to the original state which is impossible even if i have a common cold a million of my no cells have already died and replaced by fibrous tissue i can't bring it back but heal i can make the person whole and to make the person whole you have to reverse the whole thing for recovery you must go to the gene the mind the environment and the body and you may wonder how do you go to the gene barbara mcclin talk showed that genes can be influenced even by external factors like your mind by various other things jumping gene hypothesis and she got a nobel prize after 30 years when she was almost alzheimer now this is a concept of disease and this is the great indian system of ayurveda and this is this has been in existence in the words of a british scholar in the 18th century for times out of mind that's middle english that means you can't ima imagine how long it was there many of you are told or almost all of you must be thinking smallpox vaccination started with edward jenner far from it edward jenner did an anecdotal criminal thing he had a errand boy in his shop called james pips who was 13 years old and one telma russell who was his patient came and told him doctor uh, jenner i won't get smallpox he said how are you so sure i had cowpox how are you so sure that if you have cowpox you don't get smallpox i i am absolutely certain so what does he do he asks her to get some cow for lymph limp and injects it onto this boy without his knowledge lo and behold james pips had a near fatal disease of cowpox he just survived with the skin of his teeth and what does jenner do next he wants to experiment he gives him a live pus of a patient who died of smallpox the previous day and the boy did not get smallpox that's the anecdotal experience but in 1740 16 uh, 1747 there was a british doctor who was an frs you know fellow of the royal society is like a nobel prize and he was a fellow of the royal college of london he went over to india for 20 years to study prospectively the vaccination system in india 
I am not going into the details, but what he wrote to the president is, this is a system which is 90% effective in the vaccinated group, we saw a 90% failure in the unvaccinated group, 90% of those unvaccinated died, 90% of those vaccinated survived and this is a method which has been there and it's authentic and it's antiquity. So you can now recommend Jenner's method for general use and that was in 1747. The the yogic powers, I don't know how many of you have read this beautiful book, if you have not, please read it. It's called Occult Power, Occult Chemistry, Occult Chemistry, O-C-C-U-L-T, Chemistry, written in 1920 by Annie Besant. Annie Besant was teaching physics in Oxford and she had a boyfriend called Charles Leadbeater, who was also teaching physics. Both of them left that, went to India. Of course, Charles didn't marry Annie, Annie became an Indian. She started the Indian National Congress and the Theosophical Society. But they have written a book. They used to get into yogic stance and could foresee things. And you would be surprised in this book. They have described the atomic structure of nine elements from hydrogen to helium at a time when none of these known things were there and they're absolutely accurate. This was written in 1920. Read that book now. Now look at this. This is the heart in our modern, modern physiology. Now, if you go back about 15,000 years ago in Indian wisdom, there is a beautiful stanza which describes the heart, which says the heart is like a lotus bud kept upside down with the tip slightly to the left between the second rib and the seventh rib in the chest. And it says from the bottom starts a stalk which bends over carrying God's power, mark my words, God's power to every part of the world. That's the aorta taking blood to all parts of the world. And we knew about the heart's function way back thousands of years ago. That's why the name Tr the yeah. Tr hrit means you pump. The, I mean, hrit means you suck. The means you pump. So it said the heart pumps and sucks the blood. This was written thousands of years ago. And what did modern medicine know? In the year 217 AD, 217 AD, Gallen wrote, blood circulates from the liver. It comes to the liver, goes from the liver, through the heart, onto the body. For 1400 years, for 1400 years, every ass of a scientist agreed with him. It was only in 1628, a practicing doctor in London who saw a fire hydrant suddenly thought the heart must be the thing and he went back and dissected a lot of animals and wrote Demoto Cordis in 1628, circulation from the heart. And he was to be killed. Exactly the three things. He said he was a heretic. He went against Gallen. He is unscientific. So he ran under the cover of darkness to Germany for one year, hiding there and came back after one year to present his thesis, hypothesis and placed it on thesis in the king's approval. And in 1629, Demoto Cordis was accepted. See, this is the progress of modern science vis-a-vis -vis what happened in the past. Now, if you want to change yourself, you must elevate yourself to a level where you can think. Ayurveda is based mainly on immune boosters. It doesn't talk about treatment. It just says, just boost your immune system. And that's exactly what we should be doing. And all these things boost our immune system. There's a thing called Ayurvedic Panchakarmas, rejuvenating therapy. You would be surprised. You feel so fine if you went through that. It's a very simple thing. But of course, there are a lot of charlatans now selling it in five-star hotels and various other, other chalas in India. That's not the true panchakarma, but scientific panchakarma makes you feel at least 10 to 20 years younger. Fruits and vegetables have been the basis of Ayurvedic medicines. Hyperemia vaccinations, Ayurveda exercise, etc., etc., they're not very important. Now, in the human body, in the non linear system, there are various rhythms that run the system. One is called the circadian rhythm. Circa is approximately 24 hours. Things that happen once in 24 hours, like you sleep, you wake up, and various things happen, your hormone secretion, etc., etc. There are what are called ultradian rhythms that happen many times in a day. Like you piss maybe four or five times, maybe ten times. You probably uh, go to the toilet and uh, pass motion maybe once. There are people who pass five times, both are normal. And these are all called ultradian rhythms. There's one rhythm which is beyond 24 hours. That's called the infradian rhythm. That happens in a woman who menstruates once in 28 days. Now, all the rhythms which are circadian, ultradian are controlled by the dominant rhythm called breathing. This is the essence of prana ayama. Prana is breath or life. Ayama is movement. Prana ayama. So, you can control all rhythms in the body which are circadian. 
including your hormone secretion, your heart, your breathing, everything, plus all the altered rhythms, but not the infrared rhythm. Because Ayurveda said, Kujendu Hetu Pratima Sartava. Every month a woman menstruates once in 28 days because of the gravitational force of the moon. We laughed at it. We laughed at it. 2003, Journal of American Journal of Physiology says a beautiful study which showed that it's the gravitational pull of the moon that stimulates the cortical cells which in turn go through the pineal body down to the gonads and the woman menstruates. What a fascinating thing. That's why I once wrote, don't go against nature because HRT, hormone replacement therapy is terribly anti-nature. I wrote it 10 years ago and hormone replacement therapy has killed more people, millions maybe, not more people. More people is not the right word. Now we have, now I'll show you how breathing changes your heart's function. Now this is the lungs on the sides. Now this is your ECG, right? If you look at the ECG, your doctor will say, oh, you're a normal ECG. Now if you look at that, there are a lot of parts where there is no electrical activity in the heart at all, which means you're dead. Then you can't have even a fraction of a second without electrical activity. If you want to really see your ECG, it looks something like this. This is the heart rate variability. What I have done in the study is, I put the heart rate in the x-axis and with a microsecond difference on the y-axis, your own heart rate. And if you go on breathing, you see your heart rate goes on moving. This is the healthy chaos of normal arrhythmia. Rhythmia is not health, arrhythmia is health. Now I'll show you another thing. Now this is the, lot of have ectopic beats. You know, when you stand up to speak to an audience, you say I have butterflies in stomach, butterflies are ectopic beats. And we doctors have been treating this with very poisonous drugs. They are not to be treated because it's still healthier. The chaos is still better. But look at this. Now this is dangerous. This is a patient whose heart rate does not vary at all with the breathing. And this patient died three hours after this was recorded. This was a patient with an extreme congestive cardiomyopathy of coronary artery disease. Now what we have done over the years, we have been able to do a CWT, continuous wavelet pattern transform. This is a very complicated mathematical thing. The same thing that I showed you as a dot, now I have spread it as a three-dimensional picture. So if you can breathe into my computer, I can tell you whether every cell in your heart is working normally or not. When you have an, a chaos like that, you see that those blobs there, various color blobs, that means health. Now you see this, this is ectopic bit, there's still health at the back. Now see this, this is a kind of disease we call as sick sinus syndrome, a very healthy thing, nothing to worry. Now this is dangerous. Here there is rhythm, that irregularity has gone, regularity has come. This is a dangerous thing. This patient was seriously ill and didn't live long. Now we did it, pranayama studies on patients in a yoga institute in Bombay and we found that all parameters their hearts function improve with four vessel coronary artery disease who were told in the hospital that without bypass surgery they'll die in three months. They're all alive five years later and not only that, their hearts are absolutely normal now. So we did this study and followed it up and showed that it really works even with the conventional reductionist parameters. Now, modern medicine has failed and failed miserably. I will show you only a few things. The Institute of Medicine report in the United States of America said that the first cause of death in the United States of America is heart attack, second cancer, third doctors and hospitals, and fourth the adverse drug reactions of the drugs that doctors prescribe, fifth then stroke and so on and so forth. And in this country with 250 million people, in, on an average 350,000 people die annually because of doctors' interventions and the drug interactions. Now, the third thing, doctors went on strike in Israel a couple of years ago for three months. They were not working at all and there were no private doctors in Israel. And then, of course, somebody broke a peace between the government and the doctors and they came back. And when they came back, audit showed the death rate had fallen precipitously in every city during the strike period. Only to come up to its original level, overshoot it when they came back to work. And do you know who broke a peace? Can you guess? Morticians broke a peace. Their coffins were not sold at all. That's the truth. And the British Medical Journal has written a beautiful editorial. Doctors going on strike will definitely improve society's health. Now, somebody said, okay, we have more doctors, there'll be less problem. There's no link between the size of the doctors and the health of society. As a matter of fact, the largest number of doctors are in Italy and the lowest is in Japan. And the health-wise, Japan is the best, Italy is the last. 
among the 14 industrialist countries seen. Now, Dr. Larry Dossi was telling about the checkups. Now, see this prospective study. It's a very beautiful study. 5,000 people were divided into two match groups, and one group was checked up every three months religiously at free costs. And the other group was told, do what you like. And at the end of five years, there was hardly any difference between the death rate in the two groups. After 10 years, the intervened group had twice the death rate due to all diseases. At the end of 20 years, three times more people died in the intervened group, where every parameter, so-called parameter was corrected by the doctors. The others didn't do anything. Next. Now, a lot of people say if your blood pressure is slightly on the higher side, as a matter of fact, now they are bringing it down and down and down. It was 160 by 110. It has come to now 110 by 75. And that's supposed to be the normal now. Now, look at that. For the first three years, nothing happens to you. Beyond that, beautifully treated people have three times more death and uh, complications than people who have not taken drugs and compared to their normotensive cousins in society. Now, very new concept has come in. This is a very important thing which uh, Dr. Uh, Dossi was talking about, the multiple sclerosis concept. The whole group of diseases called the autoimmune diseases, that is your own body cells think you are foreign and try to attack you. This is called the concept of horror autotoxicus. Paul Ehrlich, two centuries ago, said, my God, what happens if the antibodies attack you? And now they think the antibodies attack you because you have the self and non-self concept. You become so selfish, you cocoon yourself and think everything else is different. No, the real concept is all are mine. All, this is exactly what Ayurveda says. Aptopasevi bhavet arogyam. If you treat everyone in this in this whole world as your near and dear ones, health will be yours for the asking. And what the, what spoils health? Krodha, shoka, bhaya, ayasa, viruddhan na bojana, tapponalan, katva, amla, kshara, lavana, tikshtoshvati, rakta, pitta, prakopet. Hatred, jealousy, greed, anger, pride. And all these things kill you. And they kill you very, very seriously and badly. Now we know the most important risk factor for heart attacks is hostility, destructive hostility. Even students in Johns Hopkins, young students, were given a hostility score diary and every three months scanned with the PET scanner and they found higher the hostility score, the quicker the damage to the coronary vessels. As young as 18 years. You would be surprised, American soldiers in the Vietnam War, 100 of them, after death, they were scanned and they found 76% of them had pre disease. Their age was 22, average age. Antibiotics have done so much of havoc that in Britain now, we prescribe maggots for wounds healing. Maggots are given, cultured maggots in packets, patient's wound is healed up and then he sort go home every day, put maggots on that, third day the wound has healed. Gangrene treatment. Now, the multiple drug resistant germs have become so dangerous that many hospitals have to close down their operation theatres because they can't operate. These germs cannot be killed by the 500 molecules of antibiotics. That antibiotics are anti-nature. You try to kill a germ, the germ mutates. And we are back to the basic. Now see, work done in this country has shown that ginger and garlic put together the most powerful antiviral drug. Honey, locally and inside, beautiful drug. Indian spices like pepper probably is the best thing. After 50 years of research in the Colindale Cold Research Center, the last paper before they closed down the center said, for cold, we cannot do any improvement. Go and eat Indian spices. The future is for integrated medicine. And leave the well alone. Don't interfere. You know, Hutchison was a great physician of the last century who said, God, give me deliverance from A, treating human beings as cases. B, making his making my intervention worse than his disease. And three, not letting the well alone. Yoga and health, probably somebody will talk more about it. Power of prayer, Dr. Dorothy has already. And never predict the future. Never predict the future of your patient. Thank you. So thank you very much for a very patient hearing. I think it's a, it's a million dollar question if I've understood the question well. There are some situations where the modern medical interventions are absolutely necessary. Let's say I fall under the car on a road. I can't be doing yoga and saying that I'll get better. I'll have to be fixed up probably at that time. But what I also stressed in the meantime was our own interventions in the intensive therapy units have also been audited to find that we overdo things. So a judicious 
mix of what is best in the various systems. No system is complete in itself for the simple reason that human beings are imperfect. So you can't have a perfect system of modern medicine, you can't have a perfect system of Ayurveda, you can't have a perfect system of Qigong or what have you. But then there are such a lot of good things and what we should do is we should take the chaff from the wheat and throw the chaff out and eat the wheat only. And that's what's called integrated future course. That's what I was trying to understand. Have I, have I answered your question, madam? There are certain situations where it's inevitable, but by and large, the so-called situations where modern medicine is inevitable is less than 5% of the population. Today, what do we do? We apply the same gadgets for 100%. And that's where counterproductive things happen. 